Hi, I'm Darlene Carmen. And I'm Doug Carmen. And welcome to the show. Carrie Seidman has experimented with art for most of her life. She spent 20 years as a graphic artist. Now she applies her unique style she calls contour topographical painting in a new project known as the Ghost Series. Hey, welcome. Thank you, Darlene and Doug. <laughs> really glad to be here. Well, before we get into the Ghost Series, uh, we should tell people about how you create your paintings on the computer. My paintings are about be what you would call a sort of a photo collage. I take old photos uh, from different periods in time and I take my own new photos I take pieces from them, put them together, do the detail work, which is where you make it look realistic, shadows, lighting, right. that sort of thing. And then you, I work over it digitally, paint over the top of it to create a completely new image. Now, you're, what, what makes that uh, term that you have, contour topographical, what, what does that mean? The term came from when I first started doing this. I work over the top of it, and to create a shape rather than, than draw the shape in, I actually do rings of color so that you have gradiated shades of, a, of different tonal values to create a shape as opposed to um, gradations themselves. Hmm. So kind of like a, like a contour topographical map. You're like not you have, blending color. Right, as opposed to blending color, you have actually solid blocks of color to give the impression of a shape. Hmm. So that's where the term hmm. came from. Well, the start of the Ghost series is, uh, it came about when you first went to Poland, right? Yes. And what inspired you when you were there? Well, we were on a trip to Poland, and we were going to the concentration camps and a few other sites around Krakow and Warsaw, and it started when I walked into the concentration camps, and I was seeing what I, what's there now, but I was also seeing the past kind of played out in the same place, and one of the things was the camp was, was too beautiful. It was very pretty, and that just didn't seem right. So what I did is I, I came up with this idea of superimposing the past and the present. I went back on the bus and was sketching furiously through the rest of the wow. trip. And when I got home, I basically sat down and started working. I spent about two years and came up with the first part of the ghost stories, which is the Holocaust ones. And then I had my first show on that part of the series in April of, of uh, 2010. So that was a couple oh. years ago. It took a, took a while. It did, but that was where I was developing the style and getting it together. I, I, I know a little bit more about it now. I planned it a little bit ahead of time. That one wasn't planned. I came up with the idea while I was there. So it took me a little longer to do it when I came back. It's so. kind of neat. Well, yeah. actually, we have some pictures. Yeah, let's let's, let's see the pictures of the Holocaust. Yep. You, you have those pictures? We well, we're looking for them. <laughs> yeah, there, there we there go. We go. <laughs> These are what we have in the series now of, of the Holocaust portion of the ghost series. Tell us about Which it. Which one is These this? Are, this, is, this is a scene from Auschwitz. Um, mm. We can move on to the next one. I'll, this is actually the Children's Memorial at the Jewish Cemetery in Warsaw. Uh, one of the stories with this particular piece, the little girl on the right-hand side in the white outfit is actually my husband's aunt who passed <laughs> away while I was doing the series. Oh. So I took a photo of her when she was a child and put her into the, as a memorial. This one, it's a little hard to see, but on the bunks, this is a, at the men's barracks in Auschwitz. On the bunks are actually ghosts of the men who were imprisoned there. And, and then the couple are, are just, I try to put people from the past and the present into the pictures just to give some contrast. Okay. This is also at Auschwitz. This was uh, just the women that were there during uh, the Holocaust. I really liked that one. Yeah. Uh, That's a very emotional one. Yeah. So, so the ghost part is from an older... Older yes, photographs. From a very that old you, photograph from the you, time period. That you merged into the And current. then the, the background is actually one of my photos that I took, and, and the person is also a photo that I took, but she's from a yeah. completely different photograph. But I put them in. Like I said, I changed the lighting, I changed the shadows, I changed the details to, to make it yeah, look like it belongs there. Wow. That's the tricky part with doing the collages. You can cut and paste something in, but to make it look like it's it fits there. Kind of burn, there is, you yeah. Know, yeah. merge the yeah. past into the future. Oh, this one's neat. This is the only one of the series that's actually colorful, because this shows what I saw at Auschwitz, which was the green grass and the dandelions and the blue skies. And except for the barbed wire in the background and the shadows mm. that are being cast are actually prisoners with their arms up. I mm. wanted this one to be very subtle, but I wanted it to show the, the beauty. I mean, even the buildings there were picturesque in an old barn kind of way. Mm. So. 
it just didn't yeah. feel right to me. Um, we got another one. So that's the five. No. There are two others in the series, but they're they're behind us on the walls here. Oh, but, fine. Um, well, what happened next was really exciting. Yeah, um, you uh, started with uh, got a Kickstarter project. I did. Yeah, I did. H have you done any since then? No, that's the only one I've done. Um, this hmm. is the one. Oh, right. the first one. But it's many, a long project. So yeah, many people are interested in, in funding their dreams, you know. So tell okay. us about the process. Well, the process started out. My husband actually knew about Kickstarter and, and brought it to me as a way of of funding the next step in the project, which I wanted to do. Um, what I did is I went to Kickstarter and I looked at some of the other projects that were very successful and tried to emulate what they did. You know, they made a video, they uh, had particular levels of rewards and what those rewards were, um, what time period they put it up for worked best, because you could put it up for, uh, you have a whole range of time periods that you can use. And so I saw which ones are more successful, just enough time, but not enough for people to get bored with it, that kind of thing. And then I went and made a video, uh, got a videographer, made a very nice video, came up with a good description for it, a good graphic for the page, good rewards for the different levels, and then put it all together and uploaded it, and, and it was, I was successful with it. I was, I was but how long is this process? Take? Do you have like a certain amount of time that you have to do this? No, or? no. You, once you get everything together, then you can upload it and then they look at it and approve it before it's actually uploaded to the site. Mm -hmm. It took me a little while to do the Kickstarter project, but that main holdup was that I had laryngitis for several months <laughs> and I couldn't do the video. So that was, that was, I was the big holdup there. But uh, once you get everything together, depending on how long it takes you to put it together, it's a very quick process. You know, well, what do you oh. feel is the most important thing is uh, to get people interested in your project? You know, you could, of course, it could be the video, but or is it what you offer as incentives for them to I think participate? It's a, it's a combination of things. Uh, one is the incentives have to be really good because people want to get something. They want to be, they want to feel like they're a part of the project. So you really want to make them feel like they're a part of the project. Uh, the main thing I think in making it successful is marketing the heck out of it. Mm. Um, I was okay. promoting it on LinkedIn, several LinkedIn groups. I was promoting it on Facebook. I was promoting it on my email list that I have a quite an extensive email list um, anywhere and everywhere I could. Well, when you said you were promoting it, how did you promote it? By sending out emails, say, look at my Kickstarter? or send a link to the Kickstarter? I Both. I would send out a, a blurb about the, the project. Uh, most of the sites that I put it on, like on LinkedIn, there's several subgroups that you can belong to. And, and most of the subgroups I belong to are either art groups or history groups, which both would be interested in an art history project. Uh. So I would send them a blurb about it. Here, take a look at my Kickstarter project. I think you'd really like this. If you want to be a part of it, here's the link. Um, people would go, they could look at it. You want to make sure that you have everything put together before you start marketing it because you don't want to send somebody to a website that's not finished because once you do that, you've lost them. So I had to do the Kickstarter project, make sure my website was updated, had everything in a row, and then start blasting it out there. And several people would come from the LinkedIn sites and look at it and were interested and wanted to be a part of it. And you mentioned to me also that people are responding to you and actually giving you some suggestions. Oh, yeah. Uh, where to go see, you know, the sites that you need to see and things like that. And that's pretty nice. It is. These my, are mainly strangers, right? They they're are just, strangers. Mm -hmm. they're, they're my LinkedIn buddies. Uh -huh. um, they, there's a huge amount of people out there that have this wealth of knowledge of all these different sites. Um, I send out a notice on, on historical sites, for instance, or American military sites, that kind of thing, saying, here's what I'm doing. If anybody has any suggestions for places I should go, I did that for the Civil War. I found some really interesting sites, like the Old Tenant Church in New Jersey, which was very exciting for me. Well, actually, let's get into that. Let's talk about okay. the Civil War, because that, that is now your next series. Next part of your series is it the is. Civil War. So before you went to the battlegrounds, um, tell us about your research before you go and also what you're striving for. Okay, well this one I was able to research a little bit ahead of time as opposed to the Holocaust series because I knew what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is research the important sites, um, which is where my LinkedIn friends came in. They said, you gotta see this, you gotta see that. I would 
research that, find out what old photos existed, what is there now. Um, if there's nothing there now, it's not as exciting. You want something to correlate the old photographs and the new photographs so you can have that, that dichotomy of the old and the new in the photo. Mm -hmm. And then you research where you want to go. For instance, if you have the old photographs or scenes from different battlefields or something, I would go there and I had those photos with me and I could find that particular site or that particular place where that happened. And then I could use the, the same photos. I could take photos for now and I'd have them matching up a little bit better than I did with Pauline. Well, no. a lot of these sites have plaques yes. and, <laughs> and a photo maybe. Yes. So it, it makes it a little bit easier on some of them That's that true. I don't imagine all of them have that. No, not all of them did. Um, I was kind of surprised I didn't realize they actually had the plaques up. <laughs> <laughs> so that made it really easy. I go there and go, you know, at, <laughs> we, we hired a docent at the different sites so that we, we had only one day at the site so we wanted to make sure we didn't miss anything. <laughs> so we'd hire these docents, and they'd take us around, and i show them what I'm looking for, and they go, well, oh, here's a plaque in front of this particular yeah. <laughs> Well, that was easy. So, But there were some that, that weren't. Well, I hear you, you uh, got a docent very excited. <laughs> How did that yeah. happen? At the, I believe that was at the uh, uh, Gettysburg. It was at Gettysburg, yeah. yes. Uh, that was really exciting. He, I. I explained to him what the project was and what I was trying to accomplish. And I had my cell phone, which had all my old photos on it that I could scroll through. Mm -hmm. And I showed him and explained the project, and he was really excited about it. And I think he carried my phone around more that day than I did looking at the different sites. And, <laughs> and like I said, most of them were in there. There's the plaque. You know, it's like, okay. But I had one photograph that he didn't know where it was. It was a picture of a field and a particular rock formation, a tree line, different things, and he didn't know where it was, but he and wanted you, to you, find you, it. You, did you have a soldier or anything in the picture? In person? the photo, there are some, some soldiers, dead soldiers yeah. on the ground, oh. and, um, which is what most of the photos were back then, were very static. They were either dead people or, or group shots, that kind of thing, so there weren't a lot mm -hmm. of action. But well, we have some pictures. Let's see some pictures of the Civil War sites. Yes, yeah, so we can see um, the one that I'm talking see, about yeah, is, is... and a few more. We walked around. The story was towards the end of the day, we were walking around, and he, he stopped the car, and we got out, walked through some woods, out into this field. This is the picture that I was trying to match. Down in the lower left, you can see the rock formation. Okay, this is the one. And the soldiers and the tree line in the upper right. And so we're walking around the field, and all of a sudden, he starts calling my name. And he tells me, come over here, come over here. So I came over, and we had found the spot where it was taken. So the next photo is the my there's my picture of the, the photo. The rock in the uh, left-hand corner is the rock that was in the uh, lower left of the other one, the tree line on the right. Mm. My photo was taken in November, so the trees are rather bare, whereas the um, Gettysburg picture was taken around the time of the battle, which is actually the 150th anniversary is today of the battle. So it would have yeah. been this time mm -hmm. of year. So it, it was a little bit different foliage. You can see the trees are very full. Yeah, yeah. Here. But Makes me wonder is, what kind of tree, but I won't ask. But that <laughs> is the spot right there. And in yes. the older picture, in the left-hand side, there's actually a, a little um, wagon. That was Andrew Gardner's, uh, the photographer's dark room that mm -hmm. he carried around with him to, to create uh, his photographs. Yeah. Oh, they had quite I, a few I just photos. have one other, uh, one short question, because you have so many projects. Is is it was it was a ghost series project that you started for Kickstarter, and that included when your trip for Poland? No, no, oh, that no. Was so no, oh, okay. all so this, the Kickstarter yeah. project oh, so is this actually is all you're expanding, doing with the Civil War. expanding, expanding the ghost mm -hmm. series. I'm actually I covering several now. sites. Um, this is the first trip I went on. I actually got photos for my Revolutionary War version. You took like 1,600 pictures I back did. east. I did. I took a little <laughs> over 1,600 photographs. We put about 1,200 miles on the car. We, we did quite a trip, but we got my Revolutionary War, but I haven't started that yet. I got the Civil War, which I'm working on now, and I'm almost finished with. But we have several other sites also, but that's the Kickstarter part of it. The Ghost mm -hmm. series, the Holocaust part was just the beginning. Well, of the sites that you visited, which ones did you feel more emotionally connected? Definitely Gettysburg and Antietam. Um, um, they're the most preserved. They're where the most action happened. And the, I guess the other one would be the old tenant church, but that was mostly just from a, a point of view that it was extremely old. It was used as a Civil War hospital, but it also has a, a Revolutionary War era cemetery around it. So it's been there for a very long time, and I love old places. But mm. Gettysburg and Antietam, there was so much that happened there, mm. and it's so well-preserved that you can just stand there and, and feel it. 
Well, do you, speaking of feelings, do you feel that a location that has experienced extreme trauma, a big event, do you think some of the feelings, the intense feelings like fear and shock, suffering, can linger? I absolutely do. I mean, uh -huh. at the, the risk of sounding too touchy-feely and, you know, wearing my tinfoil hat, but yeah. I do feel that when something has happened like that, it does leave a vibration or a residue or whatever you want to call it. And I think if you're very sensitive yeah, yeah, yeah. to that, you can pick that up. I think that's why people like old sites, why we preserve historical sites, because people know that happened there and they feel it. I think there's a, a level, some people are more sensitive to it than others. Other people just walk through and don't think anything and other people are, are almost paralyzed by the, the yeah, feeling. This is a yeah. one, of, one of the things that your primary thing you're trying to bring into these, this, this ghost series of yours, the, the current and the past and how it all kind of relates exactly. and, and it's you know it's a you want people to feel there. right you, you, it's real yeah. well my I, them. I feel like my definition of an artist is to be an interpreter for what I see so that other people see what I see because it, it dawned on me several years ago that people don't see the world like I do yes and I always thought they did when I was a kid it was like you know how could you just walk past that that's you know, the pattern or the color is so incredible. Why, yeah. How could you do that? And people don't see that. But if I take that and put it into a painting of some kind and then show it to them, everybody stops and goes, oh, wow, that's so beautiful. I said, well, remember that weird pattern that I saw on the sidewalk, you know, that you just walked by? Well, that's it. So I realized that I have to kind of interpret the world and put it onto the canvas so that other people can see it. So mm -hmm. I think that's my job is here is to kind of show them what I'm seeing when I look at the old sites. I think we have more pictures now of some of the sites. Can we yeah, see some, some of those? the photographs. I, these are just some of the photographs ah. I took. This is at the Appomattox Courthouse. It's Appomattox Courthouse, most people don't know, is actually a, a little village. It's not actually just one building, but there was one house where the surrender was signed at the end of the Civil War. This is just a small oh, little building that I liked, and I liked the way the light was ah, coming through the tree. Very nice. And it's, it's so lonely. <laughs> it, it's looking, I'm looking with the wide angle lens, too, so it looks a little tweaked, but I just really liked that. Oh, so. it's beautiful. This was taken at a little pond on G at Gettysburg. You can see the split rail fences in the back, and then I just loved the way the light was playing on the, the cattails. These are just photos from the trip. They're not necessarily part of oh, the trip. Oh, they're nice. They're very nice. This is one of the monuments at uh, Gettysburg. This, and I just w I liked the doorway of it, the sunset. It's up on top of a little round top, and I like the way it looked. So, mm. this oh. was actually at Valley Forge. Um, Beautiful. I, I wound up doing a lot of sunsets and sunrises. This is actually the sunset. <laughs> I didn't know that about myself till this trip. I came home and half the photos were sunsets and sunrises. <laughs> but this is a uh, sunset at Valley Forge after we'd been there taking photos all day. This sunset was actually, oh, I almost missed it. This is beautiful. on the James River oh, in Lynchburg, in Richmond, Virginia. And it's right on the, the Bell Island. There was a, a Civil War um, prison, prison on Bell yeah. Island. And I went out there looking for the prison, which of but, course was not there anymore. Yeah. But I did see this beautiful sunset and I almost missed it because somebody put a big ugly train trestle in front of it. And I was <laughs> trying to get shots around it until my husband found a footbridge over the river. We were able to go out and get these shots. Oh, that's, and the sunset just happened to be there. It just, did. It's gorgeous. Oh. This is actually at Lafayette Park. It's directly across from the White House in Washington, D.C. And it was just a beautiful fall day and it was kind of rainy and I just loved the way the photo came out. Ah, oh, really nice. The only editing on this was there was a really ugly lamp post in it, and I took it out. So these were all in, in 2012 in the fall? Uh, yes, November yeah. of 2012. Yeah, that's wow. beautiful. And then, and then from these photos, then, of course, you have to make your selection, and that's, that must be horrible. 1,600 pictures, well, not all of this. Some was a Revolutionary War, which we won't even talk yeah, about here. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> those are another Volvo. <laughs> but, yeah, it is quite a challenge, but it, a lot of those photos are of the same thing. Uh-huh. So... There's a, you know, maybe 100 photos of a particular site, and so I go through them and pick out which ones I want to work with, narrow that down, and then I look through my old photos and see which are going to mesh together, and that narrows it down a little bit more, and then once I pick the ones I want to work with, that's when I start doing the, the photo itself. So did we show the one of the, that the docent helped you find? Did we, did yes. we yes, actually that's show that? Yeah, that's 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 that's
This is uh, Gettysburg. This Aww. is one of the ones from Gettysburg. There's a battle going on in the background. Mm. This was one of my favorites. I like that one. Wow. Very mm. moody. Now, actually, you got some of your characters from the reenactment I did, in Felton. I did. There was a reenactment going on in Felton Memorial Day weekend. Uh -huh. I was able to get some, some new old shots. Uh, this they look is quite young. <laughs> yes. Well, they were just these beautiful young guys running around in uniforms. They were just perfect. <laughs> this is on a wall at Antietam, one yeah. of the battle sites. This is actually at Appomattox Courthouse again. This particular mm. building in the background. What the top part is, this is kind of interesting, the, the old photos were on a glass plate. This is the remnants of a glass plate photo of that building. And so what I did is I took the same shot. And so I superimposed the remnants of the glass plate over the over. top of my oh, photograph wow. of the same site. And mm. then I put the person in the foreground to kind of give it the depth. Mm. So it was kind of a, a little fun one that I was trying to put together. Wow. This is the old Dunker Church at Antietam. Um, that's actually that the church has been rebuilt because it was destroyed after the war. Oh, sure. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a famous photo of the old Dunker Church with the, the cannon and the, the bodies in the front that way. This is where I've got the past and the present. We've got the tourists walking by and the monuments in the background, which, of course, weren't there during the war. But the church itself, which I've actually showed, I've got an old church photo superimposed over the new church, and you can see the, the cannon fire and the chipped away spots, that kind of thing from the war. And then, of yeah, course, and that was, uh, the cannon mm. and the, the soldiers. This is the Hagerstown Pike at Antietam, which was the scene of one of the really bloody battles. It's very subtle. It's a little hard to tell. But in yes. the ridges of the shadows, yes. I've actually put, superimposed one of the, the famous photos from that particular battle oh. of the bodies. And I wanted them to kind of blend into the grass and the dirt because they're part of the mm. ground. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. I, you have a Volkswagen there. <laughs> yeah, I wanted the new and the old in there. I'm kind of experimenting a little more. This time they're not all people for the new pictures. So I'm trying to put kind of just glimpses of the, the modern day along with the older. <laughs> so well, that makes it neat. Well, your next trip is, is to uh, Pearl Harbor. Yes. Yeah. We're yeah. going at the end of this month, the end of July. Yeah. Um, I'm well. planning that out right now. Um, one of the things I did is I went back to my LinkedIn buddies, and I've been getting a lot of really good information about places to go. And mm -hmm. one thing that was very exciting today, um, I got a notice from an actual Pearl Harbor survivor who's really? 91 years old. Oh. He wrote me today and gave me some information oh, about where oh to go. Oh, my goodness. And, and that was really exciting. Oh. I, was, I was so excited to get that from him. Oh, my goodness. But I'm collecting a list, and then they, they suggest places, and then I look them up and see if they work for the project. And it's, it's a good way to get little off the beaten path, places that you wouldn't know about. I mean, Pearl Harbor, right now, my list of places to go is at about 12 places, which you wouldn't think there'd be that many places to no. go to on Oahu that pertain mm -hmm. to Pearl Harbor. But there are actually a lot of sites that hmm. pertain to the battle. Well, I was stationed there quite a while, <laughs> a while back uh, while I was in the military. And uh, then uh, we went there on a vacation. Yeah. But one of the things I never got to do was mm. to visit them the uh, memorial, the USS Arizona memorial. That's right. You, uh, do you know much about that, or did you? I have been there. Um, I, I was there when we were in uh, Hawaii before, and uh, we're going there again. But I have been researching the battle itself. Actually, on the Arizona, I have the numbers here. On the Arizona, there were um, 1,100 men were killed on the yeah, Arizona alone. Yeah, it's, it's and the battle lasted a little under two hours, and there were <sighs> about 2,300 people killed and about 1,400 wounded. Wow. So it was a, a massive attack, and I'm, I'm learning all these, these different facts and figures. And, and Well, you yeah. like history anyway. I you do. said you just read everything that you I possibly do. can, and you have to in order to appreciate it, too. I've, I've always been um, a history buff, so... So what this. are some of the other sites now for the rest of the series what you, that you're going to visit? The rest of the series, yeah. uh, well, I've got the Revolutionary War and the Civil War photos. <laughs> so We're then, not in order, exactly. No, they're a little out of order. But then we're going to Pearl Harbor the end of the month. And then the, the last trip after that is going to be to France, mm. where I'm going to be covering Normandy. And then we're flying up to the French-Belgian border to cover World War I and the sites up oh, there, the Flanders Field yeah. and Somme <laughs> and a few other, you know, there's about a there's dozen a, sites oh, up there. Yeah. 
So that's going to be a nice long trip, but that'll be the, the last two would be World War I. How World much War time II. are you allowing for that, or are you not putting a deadline? Just We'll probably take a, at least a week, maybe longer. Oh, at least, I would think. Well, that's what we did for the Civil War. We, we took about a week. We flew in. We, we had a couple of personal things to do while we were there, but... There's so much to see in France. There was a lot. You could get sidetracked. Well, that's <laughs> true. Well, to sum up, what has the series done for you, you know, as far as, as an experience of... It's, well, experience. I've learned a lot more about American history. Um, yeah. It's made it more personal for me. Uh, the, the main thing that I've noticed lately is working with the Civil War photos. The thing that gets me the most is I look at these photos and here's all these, these young men and these boys yes. laying in these photographs and yeah. I, I just wonder who they are. They're nameless, faceless people that were people. They had yeah. lives, they had stories, they had histories, they had families. And I can't help but really be touched by the fact that they're just in these historical photos but nobody knows who they are. So that's kind of gotten to me a little bit. But overall, I'm just enjoying being enmeshed in the history. Have you ever been overwhelmed with this project? I, I think I would be. Um, a few times. A yeah. few times. Actually, yeah. while I was, I was practicing my script today, and when I got to that part right there, I actually got really teary. And yeah. <laughs> I thought, OK, no, don't cry, don't cry. Because, <laughs> because I do tend to be very sensitive to yeah. that. And, and you yeah. can see their faces. When you're working that closely with the photographs, when you're going in and cropping particular sh people out of the pictures and shapes and things, you're looking right into their little faces. And you, you, you can't yeah. help but, but think, you know, that's somebody's son. You know? Oh, yeah. And so it does tend to, I try not to get very personally involved because that it is hard for me. I'm very sensitive to that sort of thing. Ah. So uh, it's 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 a big huge project and I really like what you're doing. I'm very Thank excited you. about it. I can't wait for you to finish it, you know, because there's gonna be so much more. And then of course you're gonna have a book. It's gonna be made oh, yeah. into a book. It's gonna be oh, made into yeah. a book. Um, so when when you have the the book finish and uh, will you come back and do another show with us? I would definitely do that. And if you're interested in keeping up with what's going on with the project or being a part of the project, it's still open for you to be a part of if you'd like. You can go to my website. I believe the dr address thank is you. on the so screen. Thank you. So thank you for watching the show and go to the website. Check it out. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you.